Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news. Sorry, I took yesterday off. Uh, first day of virtual school here in Massachusetts, and this house has been in shambles for over 48 hours. The stress that this stuff causes to... I don't, know. I don't I don't believe that we need to be doing all this. However, that is just one man's opinion, but it is causing ripples that is just taking us time to catch up with. My apologies. I'm sure some of you are feeling the same thing as well. Uh, before I jump into today's news, I wanted to just give everybody a quick update on some major cases that we're anticipating in California. Uh, we all know the Duncan v. Bracera case uh, is still, we're still waiting. You got a couple days left before uh, they are going to decide, they being the Ninth Circuit, to decide if they're going to take that up on Bonk. Another case we're waiting for in the Ninth is the Young versus Hawaii case. That's the open carry permit slash concealed carry permit that Hawaii doesn't issue, which basically is a ban on carrying firearms. And uh, those the uh, on Bonk panel has been selected for that case. I believe it's taking place on the 24th of this month. Uh, the 11 judges have been named, and uh, by one, there's a majority of conservative judges on this panel so you would think the outcome would be positive however you never know with some of these justices just because they're technically appointed by a technical republican doesn't mean they are going to technically do things related to how the constitution says so that's coming up rapidly also the california assault weapon ban case miller v becerra there's a little bit of movement on that the miller side is using the three judge panel decision in duncan which said that anytime you uh, take into consideration uh, a re or an infringement or a restriction on enumerated rights, it should be held to the strict scrutiny standard, and that this intermediate scrutiny standard that they've been using in around the country is made up. So that could be huge as well. So three big cases in California, a lot of movement in the last couple days out there. Now let's get into this one. There's a gun control group in Illinois. Uh, Illinois, the same state that owns Chicago, which is the most restrictive uh, gun control state in the land, still has the most gun violent crimes, imagine that. Also Illinois, the number one state in the top five, that video is floating above if you want to see that, to see what other states are in the top five. But Illinois, the most guns bought through uh, up through mid 2020 uh, with the, you know, the bum rush of purchases going on. But there's a gun control group there called People for a Safer Society, and they're begging people in a roundabout way to call in more red flags. Let me explain. Now in Illinois, the red flag is called a firearm restraining order. And one of the things that this group is saying is that black and brown people have long been disproportionately plagued by gun violence. Well, <laughs> we'll get into that. And they're also saying that they're uh, disproportionately affected by COVID-19. It has to do more with uh, population density and stuff like that. Um, different different argument altogether, different video. Even Every Town for Gun Safety had something to say on this. It said, they said, as the coronavirus has rolled across the country, its virulent impact has not been evenly felt. Black Americans are nearly twice as likely as white Americans to die from COVID-19. They are more than four times as likely to die from a firearm homicide. City gun violence has persisted even amidst shelter-in-place orders. Systemic and structural discrimination against communities of color is resulting in these communities disproportionately experiencing the deadly effects of both public health crises. I'm going to say no on that. Um, no, uh, it's bullshit. <laughs> because anytime you have a population that is you know, thrust together in close quarters, such as city living or very tight urban communities. I grew up in a project. And you know what? There were a lot of people that were closer together who didn't have a lot of money to buy their own home, which is why when anything happened in that area, the statistics were skewed, if you know what I mean. The same is true for what they determine gun violence, but I want to tell you a little bit more before I get into that. So people for a safer society want to say this, uh, while this double health crisis looms, we want to inform Illinois residents about the firearms restraining order, which went into effect in January of 2019. This law can help to temporarily remove firearms from people who pose a danger to themselves or others. Hint, hint, wink, wink. 
Illinois is one of 19 states that have a new law like this, sometimes called extreme risk protection orders or red flag laws. And they threw that uh, little paragraph in there for those who don't live in Illinois that might be paying attention to like kick off that spark and let it kindle into a flame that, hey, you know what? There's more gun owners out here. We should be calling in more red flags on these people. They go on to say, why isn't FRO needed? Well, we know that it's not needed because it is unconstitutional, it is illegal, it violates all kinds of our civil rights to include the Second Amendment, due process, illegal search and seizure. Uh, it's going to restrict your speech uh, because you can't say anything because somebody's going to twist that and say you'd hurt their feelings somehow and try to have your rights removed. But what they say here is that some individuals in crisis and at risk of harming themselves or others may not be prohibited from purchasing or possessing firearms because they're not criminals and you're making this stuff up is a great proportion of that. But they also say they haven't been convicted of a prohibitory crime, they aren't subject to domestic violence restraining orders, or they don't meet the criteria for involuntary commitment. Which if you've been following along, I'll put the playlist up there about red flag videos, that's been the big thing that I've been pushing is that the, red, the, the components in a red flag law exist in every single state with the exception of removing somebody's Second Amendment at a whim. But they want people to know that the FRO offers families and law enforcement a judicial pathway to temporarily removing firearms and prohibiting future gun purchases. It's a way to violate someone's rights. Now again, I put the call out to every police officer across the land. I don't care what your rank is. Brand new rookie to chief of police. If you push red flag, unlawful, con unconstitutional legislation, if you push that, then you're one of the problems in that field of work, my friends. You should not be violating anybody's rights. You have to remember that when you went through the academy and you learned all this stuff, and you took that oath that you said you would protect and defend the United States Constitution as well as the Constitution in your state. So why would you go out and willfully violate those? Food for thought. Things that make you go, hmm. So let's get back to the uh, the disproportionate numbers. Uh, a lot of the cities have one thing, the major cities have one thing in common, and that's gang activity and criminal activity, right? They're both criminal, but uh, there are more shootings in areas that have, have high volumes of gang activity. And that is the gun violence that they refer to anytime they want to restrict your lawful right to carry a gun. And far too often, they never get called on that. Red flag laws on law-abiding citizens will do nothing to stop gang activity, and they will do nothing to stop criminal activity. Wow. Imagine that. Also, if you take the numbers that have been released by the NSSF and other groups that monitor this stuff, the of the 5 million new firearms owners in this great land, half of these new people welcome to our group, all of you, but half of this group is considered minority. And they're asking for people to call out red flags on this group. And in the inner cities, to their own claim, are mostly minority. So one should deduce that people for a safer society is asking people to put red flags on minorities. That's what it sounds like. And to back that up, they even said this. Gun sales in Illinois have greatly increased since March. With increased gun sales comes the inevitable rise in gun violence, be it domestic gun violence, suicides, homicides, or accidental shootings. Actually, no. Just because somebody owns a gun doesn't mean inevitably, inevitably crime will increase. In fact, an armed society is a polite society. But I just wanted everybody to know that that is happening, and this group is trying to spread the word so that it could also kick off in more states, because there are 19 states that have red flag legislation. So please pass this along. This is something that the gun community should know. We should have this in the back of our mind, because this type of movement could be very dangerous, and we can't let it happen. So let's call it out now before we have to play catch up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. This is Guns and Gadgets. This channel is focused on Second Amendment news, no matter where it happens in the nation, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. And I try to sprinkle in some gun and gear reviews as we go along, but I ain't got no ammo. But uh, if you find any value in this video or any of my other videos, please subscribe to the channel. This is where you're gonna get the information. And if you are a member, please double check your subscription because they've been changing that all along. And if you're interested in helping to support this channel, you can check the links down below. You can uh, join on Patreon. There's all kinds of ways and my new, uh, my new merch is available there as well. 
Uh, and I look forward to seeing you all on the next one. Until then, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a weapon. Have a great one, guys.